Um, we're going to move on to our first sort of section for the day. This one is called Just a Member of the Band, and I, I actually really like that term. The reason um, we're talking about uh, just a member of the band is you've probably heard a lot of the time this idea of, you know, AI is going to steal our jobs, uh, robots are going to steal our jobs, robots are going to replace us. When is it that the AI is going to be writing the poetry instead of the poets or the AI writing the, the screenplays instead of the writers? And I really like this idea of framing um, AI not as something that isn't going to replace us and is scary and we should turn away from, but rather um, a member of the team, a member of the band, something that's going to help enhance what it is that we already do, what it is that we are already thinking, and actually challenging sometimes the way that we think about our work. So to kick off this sort of first um, this section on just a member of the band, we're going to have four um, talks from, as you can see, we've got four speakers up here. We're all going to do some short talks and then we're going to move into a nice discussion afterwards. Um, but to begin with, um, we're going to have Harry uh, Yeff is going to kick us off, um, also known as Reaps uh, 100. Um, he is better also known as a stage name, Reaps One. So he has three different identities he was telling me about backstage. He's a London-born musician musician, artist, and beatboxer. Um, he produces work spanning disciplines, context, and media as a response to an ongoing investigation into the evolution of the human voice, art, and science. Interestingly, in 2018, um, Reaps One presented the first ever beatboxing battle um, between him and an AI opponent, um, which you're going to hear a little bit more about in his talk. So please join me in giving a huge round of applause and a big welcome to Harry F. Reaps 100 and Reaps One. Um, my name is Harry Yef, I'm also known as Reaps 100. Um, I'm effectively an artist in research. Um, <clears throat> I'm particularly interested in how the human voice is evolving globally. And it's a very real question, why do artists matter in innovation spaces? Very often artists will come in as a decorative whistles and bells addition, but more and more we are needed as the empathy end of the process. It doesn't matter how effective a process is at all, um, people need to engage with these ideas. And it's a very real problem that narrative dictates how the general public engages with new ideas. We need to dispel fear to make sure that people engage with new problems, understand new problems, um, and sensationalism doesn't create fear uh, and inaccuracy. Uh, traditional media is not working. We all know that all these beautiful tools of reasons that we've developed uh, are no longer enough. We need to use beauty, awe, and experience. But specifically, the human voice, it's a strange thing that that can change and evolve. It's as old as we are, and it's a very real question, how far can voices go? Well, in truth, they can go pretty far. Earlier this year, I bounced my voice off of the moon um, in collaboration with Sister Moon Project, and uh, my voice in the form of radio frequencies that did not hit the moon are now traveling out at the speed of light. And despite the poetry of a project like that, I'm much more interested in real world problems. We do not use our voices to their maximum capacity. We use about 20% of our expressive vocal possibility. And I'm very much interested in using research, experimentation, technology to explore how to increase that number globally. If you do that, you increase the well-being of the planet globally. We all must use our voices more. So how do we do that? Augmented relationships is at the very heart of all of my tech-based work. How can we use technology to interrupt us, to break our habits? There's a saying in chess, which is, with every success, you dip yourself in brass. Your strengths can become your prisons. Our habits are like a prison in many ways. So we can use technology, installation, performance, experience, to open people up. So what is a, an example of pushing the voice to push the mind. This is a project called C-Sound. C 
C-Sound is a vocal sculpting tool. Um, we can use the human voice to build, transpose a vocalist, a singer, my extended techniques into a brand new form. And we collaborated with uh, an incredible space in New York, myself, The Mill, a creative director called Rama Allen. Uh, we opened it up to the public. And despite me being able to use it for performance, uh, the most important thing that happened that day was a very clear example of the function of engaging with new technology. We had about a thousand people come through, but there was a very shy young girl who was like a koala bear attached to the leg of uh, her dad. And she walked up to the performance piece and da, ba, ba, she started with, but as she saw her voice manifest, she started to scream, shout, laugh. She flowered, she opened up. So her augmented relationship with a tool like this allowed her to express. There's a very direct benefit, functional opportunity that comes from engaging with a piece of tech like this. So these are some other examples of pieces that were built that day. And I think it's such a clear, wonderful example of how human voices are so unique and so different, but also how that little girl is an analogy for why we want to engage with these pieces of tech, with these new ideas. So this year I released a video piece called Second Self. It was a collaboration with uh, Nokia Bell Labs um, and Lonely Leap. We wanted to try and engage with machine learning, use machine learning techniques to impact the general public, make people that would never normally be interested uh, in those spaces become interested. Um, Dada Bots is an incredible collaborator of mine. We had a conversation about my past. I was a tournament chess player growing up. And there's something very interesting in why game theory is so important for machine learning. As everybody knows, chess is being pushed and game theory is being pushed by machine learning across the board. We're able to push ourselves further with an opponent. The fact that we can design an opponent that can go beyond our capability, it makes us afraid. When I was playing chess growing up, my opponents caused wholesome fear. That interaction pushed me further. Things that I could never do studying, working on my own. So now, instead of relying on squares in chess, we can use machine learning and that same game theory principle in other practices. So for me, my hyperspecialism is the human voice. How can we use machine learning to push my voice further? The voice you're about to hear is not mine. She sees. So I just want to describe that in this uh, meeting. Um, they um, are most nice in a form. This is just, and so this is um, them. So, so that uh, this. So. You've heard me speak for the last five minutes. The first time I heard this type of technology, I created a data set of about four hours of me speaking, but then generative voice is quite common. So I was interested in all of my extended techniques. Can I create a data set with my specialism uh, and what would happen? So what you're hearing there is uh, using sample RNN to generate my voice. But eventually, we started to generate patterns, phrases, structures that I'd never done, but using my voice, which is only one of. And instead of having the knee-jerk reaction, which I hear all the time, this kind of concept of uh, dis disownment, the fact you don't have control, you're giving something away, I had a whole new perspective on my voice and my practice that I could not achieve any other way. In a 10-minute clip, I was told that I did 140 variations of kick drum. That type of observation can only happen through machine learning, and I think that is beautiful. We're able to observe ourselves, understand ourselves, quantify ourselves in a way that we cannot without this technology, and that is a human thing. We can use these technologies to become more human and grow in the spaces that we want. There is no AI. It is human using tools. So what did I do with it? Um, I created a composition um, in the anechoic chamber at Nokia Bell Labs, um, and I have a small clip of it here for you to watch.
we must use performance like this to fight narratives of fear, to create narratives of ownership. Artists are the ones that can use sensationalism to fight misinformation. My name is Harry Yef. Thank you very much.